Without further ado, we'd like to introduce you to our keynote speaker for today for IHC 2022, Dr. Michael Dixon, a senior GP in Devon, chair of the College of Medicine and chair of the Integrated Medicine Alliance. He, he has held numerous leadership roles, including the first chair of the NHS Alliance, <coughs> uh, president of the NHS clinical, clinical commissioners, and as a leader within the GP clinical com commissioning movement. He is currently co-chair of the National Social Prescribing Network. He is visiting professor at the University College London and at the University of Westminster. He is a senior fellow in public policy at the University of Birmingham and an honorary lecturer at Exeter Medical School. He is also the author of Time to Heal, Tales of a Country Doctor. Today he will move us to action by talking about a new imperative post-COVID and helping people tackle their health problems where conventional approaches have not proved sufficient. Over to you, Michael. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to speak this morning. Um, and it's a great pity we can't be here in person, uh, uh, having to be virtual during these times of COVID. And I'm afraid for me, it's slightly worse even still, because I'm actually speaking to you yesterday afternoon. Um, because I contracted COVID yesterday uh, and I have to be on a high dose of immunosuppressants, which means as I should be speaking here this morning, I will be in a hospital bed receiving an infusion. But thinking of you all and hoping this conference every success. Now, I want to particularly praise, first of all, those brains behind the conference, Dr. To Wong and Dr. Naveed Akhtar. They really do represent medicine of the future, compassionate, but also bold and open-minded. And in the next quarter of an hour, I want to discuss why medicine needs to move from a conventional to an integrated model. Why that integrated model has become quite so urgent at this time. And then I'm gonna make an announcement that many of us have been waiting to hear for over 40 years. Let's start with conventional medicine. I wouldn't be alive without it. And I suspect many of you at this conference would say the same, and my own predicament today only makes that even more true. Many of my patients who used to die here in Devon in their 60s and 70s now live to their 80s and 90s. But there is a problem. That problem is that conventional medicine has become too pervasive, too exclusive, and it's now also become unsustainable. And I'll explain why. Today, we expect a pill for every ill, and that led to too many pills. Not my words, but those of the Chief Pharmaceutical Officer for England in a report published only at the end of last year. 10 to 15% of our patients at any one time are taking sleeping tablets, tranquilizers, antidepressants, or painkillers. Opiate overdoses are now the most common cause of death of young American males. And in the UK, we're now seeing the same percentage increases as the USA. And only last week, a report came out showing that the number of admissions for opiate overdoses to hospital had doubled in the last decade. Overuse of antibiotics is leading also to antibiotic resistance and now deaths. And it's because of this overuse of pills that the College of Medicine is launching with a number of senior politicians, an initiative that we're gonna call Beyond Pills, which will be in the summer. So wait, 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 wait and watch out for that. Um, there is another problem. And that is, as every GP knows, our pills don't work very well for a whole range of patients that we commonly see, such as patients with chronic tiredness, frequent infections, irritable bowel disease, headaches, back pain, stress, depression, just to name a few. And then there are the side effects of that medication. 2,000 people, for instance, dying annually per year from gastric perforation, having taken anti-inflammatory treatment previously. Surely, we should only give our pills when they are absolutely necessary and effective. 
And these issues are compounded because modern medicine has become too exclusive with its population-based evidence demanding double-blind placebo-controlled trials for everything. And that's totally appropriate when it comes to heart attacks or cancers or bleeding limbs, but less so for the things that we see, which are often self-limiting, often not life-threatening uh, in general practice. Yet, woe betide the GP that crosses the tram lines of nice guidelines or care pathways with those no-win, no-fee lawyers poised to pounce at every opportunity. It seems that intuition and experience today count for very little. And then finally, with modern medicine, there is this issue of sustainability. There will never be enough doctors and nurses. And as the population increases, and as it ages, and as the rate of long-term disease increases, the workload of clinicians each day becomes increasingly impossible. And resources that should be available to the GP simply aren't there. Almost three quarters of our GP referrals to the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service are turned down. Weights for children with autistic uh, disease uh, disorders are commonly well over a year. And what can we do anyway for those one quarter of our young 14 to 16 year old girls who are self-harming at any one time? Consequently, the, the modern GP has become a bit like one of Pavlov's unhappy dogs, constrained only to give a few treatments that too often don't work, often with side effects, and unable to explore wider options for fear of litigation, while being increasingly abandoned by services that should be supporting them and their patients. And that is why today we must now urgently move to an integrated model. What is integrated medicine? Integrated medicine is the coming together of the conventional and the complementary. Where it's safe, where it's appropriate, and where there's an evidence base that is relevant and proportionate to the seriousness of that problem. It's what His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, calls the best of both worlds. And it's not a return to some nostalgic past, though it does value ancient wisdom and experience. It's the next stage of medicine, postmodern medicine. And let me explain why. Medicine and science are moving from the rather blunt use of population-based evidence to become more individual and more personal. NHS England has a whole department of personalized care. And an increasing knowledge of the genome and of the biome are leading to much more bespoke, tailor-made personalized medicine for each of us. And that requires, and is already involving, a new science. And that science is called systems medicine, which is the application of systems biology to develop personalized healthcare. Now, last month there was a striking example of exactly this in the proceedings of no less than the National Academy of Sciences of the USA. The paper concludes remarkably. These results make meditation an effective behavioral intervention for treating various conditions associated with a weakened immune system. And they then go on to mention multiple sclerosis and COVID. Integrated medicine is on the march, and it's on the march with new molecular explanations. Integrated medicine is able to provide this personalized medicine because it gives patients the choice of whichever approach he or she feels would be appropriate for them. A priori, that approach is likely to be more successful because the patient has chosen it and it uh, fits in with his or her beliefs uh, and those of the clinician that is treating them. And this um, personal effect, uh, I've called it the human effect in the past, is amplified by the extraordinary self-healing powers of each of us. Those natural killer cells, those immune cells in our white cell system that are emotionally related uh, and therefore our emotions can actually create more of them and a better defense against disease. The natural opioids within our body for pain or, and, and also the hormones, all of these things make us self-organizing beings capable 
most of the time of healing ourselves, which we do with so many diseases, and where mind, body, individual processes are a major part of healing in every instance. And indeed, they are a major factor in whatever treatment we provide, whether it's conventional or complementary. And remember also that a sick person is not simply that normal person plus the illness. We're changed in mind and body by illness. And our new science needs to factor that in, both in terms of the disease itself and how we heal it. Integrated medicine works with the forces of nature and the healing processes of the individual patient in this way. And that's quite different from the more aggressive processes required to confound the workings of our body in conventional medicine if we have a cancer or we have a heart attack or a bleeding limb. And that is precisely why we need both. Healing may often involve reversing one process of the body with conventional medicine while reinforcing those processes that normally help us to heal through a different modality. The latter is often a slower, gentler process of healing, but more sustainable in the long run. And that sustainability is partly because integrated medicine is so much about what people can do for themselves and each other and their communities, both in healing and also in enabling individuals and communities to be more resilient in the first place. And if we fail to make individuals and communities more resistant to disease in this way, our health services in future will simply become unsustainable. And that brings me back to those poor old clinicians feeling like Pavlov's dogs. Integrated medicine allows them to apply art and science to use the power of compassionate relationships and the influence of mind and body in healing. It's liberating because it allows them to again to think for themselves, to choose with their patients options that they mutually think best rather than following the one size fits all model. And it allows us to be the doctors and nurses and therapists that we always set out to be and to stop banging our, ha our heads within a purely conventional model of medicine where too often I just see deep misery and discontent. Today is the time to right a deep wrong of the last 30 or 40 years that has seen a dogmatic and bullying intolerance to therapists and those in conventional medicine who have looked intelligently outside the box of the medicine that they were taught to practice. Today, those battle lines are over. The intolerant old guard has begun to look arrogant and insensitive to the needs of both patients and clinicians. And we now have a wave of young clinicians and therapists who are working together, as you are all at this convention today, and leading the way towards a much better medical world for our patients and those that look after them. And that brings me to the announcement. For too many years, the complementary community has been too divided and behaved like tribes, which are all too commonplace, both in orthodox medicine and so many other walks of life. Today is the official birth of the Integrated Medicine Alliance, the IMA. This is the coming together of inspiring leaders covering the main complementary modalities. These are brave men and women who've decided that the whole is more important than the parts and have worked together over the last year or two to create a unity that can explain the benefits of all complementary approaches to both patients and to clinicians. The aim of the Alliance is to inform, to educate, and to enable access to qualified complementary clinicians. And you can see a wealth of information on the College of Medicine website, different modalities, when they might be useful, and what qualifications you should look for, as well as plenty of videos with patients and therapists. For me, this is something really deeply personal. Because after working 10 years in general practice, I was burned out in the 1990s. I was fed up with trying to sort so many complex problems with the blunt instruments from my conventional medical training and desperate to look for alternatives that might help the daily suffering of my patients. Today, 
and this is very personal, my own elementarium includes a mix of acupressure, massage, breathing techniques, self-hypnosis, mind-body therapies, a range of herbs, diets, and an increasing interest in healthy eating. And this has turned my professional life from gray and a bit miserable into color. And learning these techniques and frequently referring to far more qualified therapists, I've witnessed, I've witnessed so often the, the beneficial effects in so many patients. And I have to say that that really has been proof enough for me and my patients say it's been proof enough for them. And that brings me finally back to this wonderful convention. COVID has shifted those tectonic plates. Our conventional medicine has proved itself to be so powerful with those vaccines and new treatments. But it's also shown itself to be very vulnerable because it is impersonal and because it has failed to explain why one person falls iller than another, what we can do in terms of lifestyle and diet to help and how individuals and communities can in future withstand and prevent similar pandemics. Integrated medicine is the answer. It's time for it to move from the side stage to the center stage. This conference represents the vanguard of change and the dawn of that new hope. A new medicine is coming. All of you here carry a very huge responsibility because you are it. Thank you.